Oh me, oh my. How is it May already? <laughs> You guys, May is ridiculous in my family. It's my husband's birthday, my dad's birthday's in a couple of days, Mother's Day, then my birthday. My parents' anniversary is also in May, so always a lot going on in May. But uh, the main focus here, obviously, my April favorites, the products that I've been loving. My main focus is the products that I picked up from the Sephora sale because the Sephora sale started April 1st and I bought, I bought so much junk. And so now I have so much to talk about, most of it from that and I apologize because yesterday's video was my Sephora haul updates. Uh, the majority of this video kind of repetitive. It didn't mean for them to go back to back but that's the way the cookie crumbled but you can at least see the products that really 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 stood out to me that I could not stop reaching for. If you hear the dishwasher going, poor decision on my part. I really wanted to eat lunch after filming and <laughs> we were out of forks so I made the decision to start it before I started filming and that's where my priorities lie. Let's get into it. I have one skincare item and she is all finished up, but I just had to share with you my love for this product. This is the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. I mean, this is nothing new. This is not a hot take, but dang, this moisturizer is amazing. I am all done. There is not any product in this. I am sad, but I have to move on to different products to test for you guys. But this was such a joy to be put into a my routine. It's intensely hydrating, but it still is really lightweight. If you have dry skin, I definitely recommend this. LMS is such a good brand. I've been loving that to the point where I finished every little drop of it that I could get. Okay, let's get into the cosmetic portion. I'm so dumb. I did not put this foundation on this morning. I don't know why but this is super duper great, so I'm excited to update you on this. I've been continuing to test the Wayne Goss The Luxury Cream Foundation. Oh my gosh, phenomenal, you guys. I just feel like my experiences with it just keep getting better. I was a little worried about the wear time with this because cream foundations don't really seem to set very well, and I do live in a hot, humid climate. It's only going to get hotter from here, but there's something about this where even if it doesn't stay looking as good as it did when I first applied it, that it just wears so gracefully and beautifully. It doesn't look like I've sweated my forehead off, which is normally what happens. I'm a very sweaty person, you guys. Uh, my upper lip foundations always disappear first because my upper lip be sweaty. But no, this doesn't like melt the foundation away in that aspect when your sweat hits it. It looks really hydrating on my skin. I blend out beautifully. My skin looks super duper healthy with this. It really complements the look of dry skin as well. Can't can't speak for how well it works on somebody with oily skin, but I'm here to update you. This is fan fantastic and it was definitely my favorite new foundation I've tried this month. Next up I have a powder foundation. This is the one size turn up the base versatile powder foundation. I picked up a new color of this during the Sephora sale. The first color that I got was really dark and orange so I uh, did an exchange and got the right color and this is such an awesome powder. I think it's really versatile. So I didn't get to show you in today's demo but one of my favorite ways to wear this being in Florida, I really like a powder foundation for a humid climate. I just feel like it sucks that my oil's a little better. Well, not even my oils, my sweat <laughs> a little bit better. So if for my everyday routine without, you know, worrying about testing products on camera, just wanting my skin to look better when I go out, I'll put on a little bit of concealer first thing and then I just use my powder foundation as powder foundation and it wears really great. My skin looks great despite sweating and all that nasty stuff and it's really lightweight and natural. So I do enjoy this as a powder foundation, but I also have been enjoying it to simply set my makeup, add a little bit of extra coverage. I did that today. I find it makes my skin look so perfected and smooth. It blurs all of the pores. I don't love it for setting the under eye, but in terms of just setting the porous areas on my skin, I think it does an incredible job. So this is one of my new favorite powder foundations. I'm a powder foundation girl. Definitely look into this one. It's so great. I just love that it's not too heavy heavy to use to set makeup, but you can still also wear it as an actual foundation as well. So this is great. I'm really late on the hype with this. 
this, but I've been loving it. The next product, oh my gosh, I told you guys I would be back talking about this. I cannot get over how much I love this Sai Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Light Bronze. It blends out really beautifully. There's a lot of qualities about this that remind me of the Chanel. It's not a do for the Chanel. The Chanel is a little bit more cream to powder kind of consistency, whereas this doesn't really dry it down. But the creaminess reminds me a lot of the Chanel, and so does the color as well. This is so beautiful. It literally melts into the skin. It's not too overwhelming of a color on my skin tone. It's not too dark. It's not too warm. It's really perfect for every day just to add that everyday kind of contour and bronze to your face just to get some color out there. So I highly recommend this. This is a really beautiful cream bronzer. I can't put it down. I have a blush. I think I've talked about this in like 10 videos, but I cannot be stopped. <laughs> this is the Laura Mercier Blush Color Infusion in the shade Ginger. Every time I get a new color of this, it really is just a holiday for me. I go to town with these blushes. I don't want to say they're my all-time favorite powder blush formula, but they're definitely the one that I reach for the most on an everyday basis. It's like not an $80 blush, so I feel like I can throw it into a makeup bag and not have to worry about it. It's not too overpowering. You can never apply too much of it. The shade Ginger is the perfect everyday kind of neutral blush. It's going to go with whatever you are wearing so yeah I picked up a new color I'm very familiar with this formula but ginger she's good for every day um I know this product got mixed reviews but I love this product I am on positive side this is the pillow talk multi glow from Charlotte Tilbury I love both colors but of course I'm going to get the most use out of the romance light color which is the lighter one I have it as my highlight today it is a blingier highlight but I feel like it doesn't emphasize my texture too much I feel like even though there's four different shades in here this looks good all mixed together but you can get slight differences if you kind of stick to one side for a lighter color or if you stick to this side for something darker it's still going to run very light but I just think it is so beautiful for all over the lid, for highlighting. I did not do an inner corner highlight, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go in with the more pinky side. So I like that there's subtle customization that you can do with this. I think the formula is really, really beautiful. And it is quite glowy, so if you don't like something super glowy, then you won't like this. I think there are like minuscule glitters in here. Nothing to bother me, really. I feel like I can pick them up a little bit on my cheek, but it's not at all bothersome to me. I also really do like the Dream Light, which is the darker one. It doesn't really work out for me as a highlight. I tried it as a blush topper. It works, but you know, it's a little shiny to be a blush topper, but I still like this for like all over the lid. And again, in this darker one, I feel like the shades differ a little bit more, so you get a little bit more variety out of this. I like both. I mean, if money's tight, I'm only going to get Romance Light, but I do not regret picking up Dream Light. Moving on to the eye portion. I have a couple brow products. The first one is the Refi Brow Pencil. I picked up a whole kit of three of the items. This is the one that definitely stood out to me the most. I just love how fine the tip is. It deposits a little bit more color than I normally would prefer, but I really like it in this case because I feel like the medium is such a good color and it also blends out so easily where I feel like if it does get too intense, if I just use the spoolie on the other end, it blends it out fine fine and gets rid of any mistakes that I made. So you have a lot of control with this and if you mess up, it kind of wipes away, but it doesn't fade away. If you don't blend it, it's not going to fade either. But yeah, I really like this. It's been a very nice, easy to use pencil. Also have been using nonstop the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Boundless Bisque. I use this for everything. <laughs> like mostly I'll use it to clean up my underbrow, but I've used it to clean up around my lips. I've used it to highlight my nose, my inner corner. I've used it as an eyeshadow base. And that's what really these can be used for is anything that you want. They're not the most malleable product, but they're malleable enough. So they give a lot of pigment. It's going to stay where you put it, but you do have some time to rub it out and make it more blended. Highly, highly recommend this. It's just kind of a great touch up pencil for me. Eyeshadow. I have two. I tried a lot of eyeshadows. So it was hard to narrow these down 
because there were a lot of good ones, but you know this was the month of the rose palette. These are the two that you probably know I was going to talk about. I've talked about them a lot. I've ranked these, so I'm not going to get too deep into it, but I have the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 Rose Palette. Of course, I mean, this is incredible. Do keep in mind though, I mean, this is a rose palette. You're not going to venture very far from the rose looks. I've created this look and worn this look essentially all month. Today I did use the cream base. I don't need the cream bases. They aren't necessary for me, but I did use it today because I was like, why not? And then I used this shade right here in the crease, blended it out to almost nothing just to create the most natural shadow. Use the darkest shade to create a little bit of depth out here and then I have this shade right here all over the lid. I mean I've worn this look so many times. You're not going to get a ton of variety out of this palette but it's a rose palette. You should know what you're in for if you're picking this up. It's great. It's beautiful. I love it. And then Charlotte Tilbury came out with one of my all-time favorite quads that she's come out with. The Pillow Talk Dreams Luxury Palette. This came out with the highlights as well. I mean you can't get better than this formula from Charlotte Tilbury. It is so stunning. It's up there with Fire Rose. If you ask me, it's another rose palette. You probably don't need this color selection in your collection if you do have a larger amount of eyeshadow palettes, but I'm such a Charlotte Tilbury stan. I'm huge on quality and this gives it to me, so I regret nothing. I think it's worth every penny. Continuing onward, this was a surprise. It was a purchase that I picked up, not expecting much of it. I just picked it up kind of just because, because Gucci Beauty has a spell on me. <laughs> And this is the Gucci Beauty Felt Tip Eyeliner. Amazing. Super black. Not too watery. You have a lot of control with it. It lasts such a long time. It's such an easy liquid liner to use. It's not as good as my all-time favorite luxury eyeliner, which is the Tom Ford eyeliner. But this might be like my second favorite eyeliner. I just think it's incredible. You see how black it is? And it's so easy to use the tip. You know, it doesn't fall over at least yet. It holds its shape. So good. So, so, so good. Gucci Loki just came out with one of the best liquid liners, like out of nowhere. Okay, and then finally, lips. I have quite a few products. Everything in today's video is rose. Clearly, I had a type this month. I had a specific look. So, Isam came out with a couple new shades of their duo lip liners. The shade Blush has been a color that I've been going to nonstop. So, this is a double-ended lip liner. We have a more pinky side and then this one leans a little bit more peach. This formula is so easy to use. It's really creamy and if you like pinky kind of neutral lips, you will love this. I'm wearing the more truly pink side but I've been using the other kind of more peachy neutral side a lot lately as well. These are just a really phenomenal lip liner formula and I just love the way that these look with my other pinky lipsticks. I have surprisingly two liquid lipsticks to talk about and I think I love them due to their color because the colors are just so pretty. So the first one that I have is from Sigma from their new mod collection. This is the shade new mod and it's just the perfect like everyday rosy mauve lipstick. It's a little bit drying as most lipsticks are. It's not my favorite liquid lipstick formula but this is like the perfect everyday color for me. So I've been going for it nonstop. So I do recommend this. If you're picking up the new mod collection or anything else from the website, this lipstick, the perfect color. I've also been obsessing over the new Gucci Beauty liquid lipsticks. I only picked up the shade Cornelia Pink and if I wasn't overwhelmed by all of the lip products that I have in my collection, I would have picked up more. The shades run quite dark or bright. There's a couple lighter shades online, but yeah, you're going to get a bold lip with these. Love this formula. So comfy. One thing to note is it's almost like a lip blur. I know they market these as liquid lipsticks, but they kind of have that lip blur formula, so it's not going to give you super pigment and I would recommend using a lip liner just to get the defined edge around the lips but they're so comfortable that it's worth it. I can truly tell that these are a luxury formula and I've been wearing this non-stop. It's one of the most comfortable liquid lipsticks even though I really wouldn't describe it as a liquid lipstick. It's more so like a very pigmented lip blur formula and it doesn't necessarily dry down but it's great. Also you might recall that this month, I don't even know it was, if it was this month, but it was last month that it came out, but we all received it this month. The Pat McGrath Labs in Bridgerton 
to collection launch. I liked the collection overall, but in terms of what Pat McGrath has launched, it wasn't my favorite collection of Pat McGrath. But her lipstick collection, one of my all-time favorite lipstick collections she's ever come out with for this, starting from the packaging. Now, I will note, these lipsticks are a little bit smaller. You get a little bit less product. They don't feel as heavy in the component, and the component does feel a little bit cheaper doesn't feel as nicely made. But the aesthetic, I can overlook it personally. I know some people can, that's fine. That's why I'm warning you that these do feel a little cheaper. But the aesthetic of it, I don't even care. And I loved the colors that she came out with. It's still Pat McGrath's great, great formula. So the lipsticks that I've been loving, honestly, they're very, very close to each other. So you probably don't need both, but I'd be lying if I didn't tell you that I wear both of these the most. So. Pick one. <laughs> Nude Romantic 2 is a little bit lighter. It has a little bit more of like a dusty rose quality to it, but it's a beautiful, beautiful formula. And again, it's within that mauve family that I've really been enjoying color-wise this month. It goes with all of my rose tone lipsticks. And then the other one that I love is Negligé. Negligé is just a hair deeper. So like I said, you don't need both, but I've been loving both. So yeah. Best lipstick collection color story wise from Pat. As you know, I've been integrating a little bit more handbag content on my channel. Obviously, I'm still a makeup channel, but I just thought I'd mention the handbag that I've been loving this month. I did do a whole unboxing on this, so if you want to see that, just look up my Tory Burch unboxing, but... This bag that I picked up, I've been wearing nonstop. I feel like it goes with the vibes of all my outfits, which is what I bought this for. I wanted a cute summery purse. This is the Kira Mini Crochet, I believe is the name. I love it. I've This is the update. I've just been absolutely obsessed with it. It goes with so many summery outfits and cute dresses. I love the very thin chain. I find it to be a very comfortable bag to wear around the shoulder. You can crossbody it as well if you want. The only thing is, this is a rough a bag. I've never owned a bag that had this material and I do feel like I see a couple of these coming out a little bit so you definitely need to be careful about this. It's like this as well but I think that's just the nature of the material but that is something I want you to keep in mind but other than that I don't have anything bad to say. I think it's very very comfortable. I think it's so cute. I think it's just the perfect summery bag. It holds all of my stuff. I love the card pockets here. So yeah, this has definitely been my favorite bag this month that I've been reaching for the most and I'm super into Tory Burch handbags now. From what I can see, they seem to be really well made and I love the designs as well. And don't get me wrong, Tory Burch is expensive. Some of her bags definitely reach towards the luxury designer handbag pricing, but still it doesn't hurt quite as bad because, I mean, you guys know, the luxury handbag market, it's, I don't make enough money to be buying those all willy-nilly, so I'm very happy with my Dory Birch. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this month's favorites. It was quite long and a lot of rose items, but some really great stuff that I tried out since I did try out so so many products thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and liking this video i appreciate it so much and i will catch you in the next one. Oh, by the way if you're wondering i will have a palette rankings going up this month i skipped last month because i didn't try that many palettes but i have a lot of palettes for that video so keep an eye out for that all right i will see you guys in the next one bye guys